Hey everybody, so uh, peptides are a really fascinating area of, uh, of science and, and health and medicine that uh, I've been really interested in for, well, it's 2020, for probably eight or nine years now. And which is, if anybody uh, kind of knows my timeline in history, that is well before I even uh, started uh, naturopathic medical school. But I wanted to take a moment to talk about a peptide that I haven't really talked uh, a lot about uh, through video uh, and uh, other digital channels. Um, and I'm actually not sure why, because it's actually the uh, the first set of peptides that actually uh, I got introduced to and started researching and really experimenting with. Um, and what I probably have the most experience with, uh, both personally and clinically, and that's the growth hormone secretagogues. So within the growth hormone secretagogues, there are a wide variety of uh, different growth hormone releasing hormones and growth hormone releasing peptides. Now, these two are uh, different in their actions. Um, and as we'll kind of break this down a little bit, they're actually really synergistic uh, when we put them together. And so um, on our growth hormone releasing peptide side, we have the older GHRP2 and GHRP6, but then we also have the newer, which is the one I prefer the most, is ipamorelin. Now on the growth hormone uh, releasing hormone side, uh, there's uh, basically a, uh, a peptide called CJC1295, which is kind of the, the older name. Um, the, the more modern name is mod GRF129, uh, which basically signifies the amino acid sequence that it was taken from. Um, and what's really important about the CJC1295 uh, or the mod GRF is that we, uh, we want the one that does not have the drug affinity complex or DAC, and, and I'll get to that in, in a moment. And so basically, to step back for a second, what these growth hormone secretagogues do is they prime the pituitary and the hypothalamus to have a burst of endogenous growth hormone. Endogenous meaning it's your own growth hormone. Um, and so when we take these peptides to have a growth hormone response, we are still respecting the native feedback system of the, uh, of the human uh, to a certain degree. Obviously, we're injecting something to cause, to initiate the start of this. But this is very different than uh, taking exogenous growth hormone because when you take exogenous growth hormone or any exogenous hormones, for the most part, you are basically suppressing the innate biofeedback uh, regulatory mechanisms of the body because you're artificially inserting this hormone that is basically uh, just superseding all of that. And so uh, with these growth hormone secretagogues, the really nice thing that I like about them is that we're not dabbling into this uh, potentially scary area where we are uh, elevating growth hormone and IGF-1 levels to a significant degree for a significant period of time that we would start to get concerned about, you know, tumor growth, cancer, and things like that. And so um, what is important in terms of having both of them, so there's studies that show that if you take the GHRP, so let's say you take GHRP6 or ipamorelin, you take that on its own, you, you get a small increase in endogenous growth hormone release. On the other side of the equation, when you take mod GRF, you kind of also get the same. You get a mild release of growth hormone. Now, when you take these things together, what happens is we now actually get a, uh, a synergistic effect where we get, you know, it's like one plus one does not equal two anymore, it equals 10, where we get a large, large uh, increase in the amount of growth hormone that's secreted uh, from the body. And uh, one of the prevailing theories right now on why this happens, which is supported in, in, in animal research and some human research, uh, is that it appears that the GHRP side of the equation basically uh, is an antagonist to somatostatin. So somatostatin is a hormone in our body that basically is going to uh, sit at the pituitary and block the release of growth hormone. That's a simplified way to, to think about it. 
And so when we have this somatostatin that is uh, basically bound to that growth hormone receptor, it, if we come in with either a GHRP or a, um, a GHRH, we only get this mild uh, increase because that somatostatin is there. Now, obviously, when we use like the GHRP6 rep and relin, we do kick that off uh, b because that's the mechanism that we're talking about here. However, it's not still not strong enough on its own. But generally, if you're only going to do one, having the uh, the ipamorelin, in my opinion, is probably the smarter one to do because at least you're kicking off the somatostatin. Now, in uh, in more so in men, but also in women, but more so in men, um, our a circadian rhythm release of growth hormone is cyclical, meaning we have these, these periods where we have a growth hormone burst and then somatostatin goes back onto the growth hormone receptor and then that growth hormone level stay, stays low. But that growth hormone goes throughout the body and basically uh, goes to the liver and different cells and it basically causes IGF-1 to be released, uh, produced and released. And then the IGF-1 goes to the body and does the actions of growth hormone. And so uh, when the, the really difficult thing about just using the mod GRF or the CJC 1295 without DAC is that we have to predict when somatostatin won't be blocking the, uh, the growth hormone receptor. Because if it is, then the mod GRF really doesn't do much. But if it's not there, then that's when we can get a big increase uh, in our uh, in, in growth hormone. And so when we use them together, basically what we're doing is we're using the GHRP to knock off the um, uh, somatostatin, sorry, blanket on the word, somatostatin, and then we're using the mod GRF to get that big, big pulsing growth hormone. And so that's why we want to be using both of them together. Now, uh, coming back to the, the drug affinity complex or the DAC. So uh, you can get the uh, the mod GRF uh, with DAC or without DAC. And, and DAC, again, as a refresher, stands for drug affinity complex. It's basically a molecule that's been attached to that mod GRF or the CJC1295. And that, um, that drug affinity complex basically makes the peptide stay in the blood longer. It decreases the rate of elimination. Now, going back to this concept that we want to mimic nature and biology, which is a pulsatile growth hormone release, and we want to respect the body's ability to have this, you know, uh, positive and negative feedback loops that help to control our levels of hormones, it doesn't make sense to have the drug affinity complex because you're keeping it around in the blood much longer. And so it's constantly hitting at that growth hormone receptor. And now we might be getting a slow trickle of growth hormone into the blood as opposed to these bursts. And what we really, really want is we want these bursts. Um, you, uh, there's uh, the, the whole concept is that we don't want growth hormone around for a long time in the periphery. Maybe centrally it's okay, but in the periphery, we generally don't want it around for a whole long time. And so these bursts are really important. And what we see is that we can ingrain these bursts a little bit more when we use these growth hormone secretagogues uh, because we're ingraining this, uh, this burst-like strength and burst-like pattern. And so um, in talking with some other docs, you know, there's, there's been talk on that um, some of the deficiency in growth hormone we see clinically may not actually be a def true deficiency in growth hormone or IGF-1 but more so that we've lost this circadian pulsatile pattern of growth hormone. And so that's where I believe the growth hormone secretagogues can come in and uh, can provide some benefit. So um, I know I was kind of all over the place seeing as this is the first uh, video that I kind of did on the growth hormone secretagogues, but um, I'll try to refine my, my kind of thinking on all of this to be a little more direct in the future. But I hope you appreciate it. If you've used or you have any insight on the growth hormone secretagogues, do uh, leave a comment below and uh, we'll get to it. All right, see you later.